at AirVenture Oshkosh, middle of the week, another glorious day. We're having some fine weather here this week. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Kelly Bartlett. He's the main man behind Franklin Aerospace. And if you've been around aviation more than a few minutes, you know the Franklin name. But I know the name and I don't know enough about the engine. So I had to come and talk to the expert here. Uh, Kelly, give me some of the basics about the engine. Uh, tell, give me a little of its history because that's kind of interesting. All right, well, Franklin, you know, it's been around for about decades, absolute decades, and it produced many, many fine engines from the 150 horsepower, six cylinders, all the way up to the nice big six 350 cubic inch engine. And uh, we got involved uh, several years ago trying to satisfy the Franklin community with a need for good technical overhaul expertise and as well as quality parts, a one-stop shop to, to, to fill the part needs. So we bought most of the inventory in the country for that and put it under one shop inventory and that's what we're doing to support in the community. Now this engine that you're looking at here, this nice little red cutie, is a 125 horsepower engine. It's based on a Franklin design they came up with, you know, in the 70s and was actually introduced as a kit engine. Now oh, really? Yeah, in, uh, in the, like the third EAA convention here. Oh, wow. Scotch. Yeah, so it goes back. It's, uh, 50 some years ago now. I can't even count that part. Well, that's anymore, right. So we purchased the, the parts on this airplane and we're putting them together in an experimental fashion, trying to meet the community. The, the selling points of it are, excuse me, is that it's a, it's a relatively light comparable engine to the O200. It's a bolt on replacement. Okay, so if you had an O200 that was worn out and you went, you know, I got to have something new and I've heard about this Franklin engine. It's not going to be a huge uh, surgery effort to make it work. It's a bolt-on engine. Comparable in weight, probably within five pounds on the lighter side. It has 125 horsepower yeah, It's rating. a little more juice than the other one. A so. little more juice. We've done a few upgrades to it to bring it up to stage a little bit, lighten it a little bit. Some of those might be a nice new uh, certified Skytech starter. Okay. It much drops about 10 pounds off the airplane. Wow, really? It gives a really nice torque. It works very well. And of course, we're offering the option of an electronic ignition by ElectroAir, and that's on the back of the engine. And then we have our backup, you know, the Magneto, which I always like to have a mechanical backup in anything I do. And the engine is basically a, an efficient, relatively lightweight to horsepower ratio, and uh, it's a it's a good, smart, stable operating platform. You compared it to the O200, and so I'm going to go into the weight a little bit. You've already got more power, so even if, if the weight were comparable, your your power to weight ratio is obviously better. But how does it compare in weight? It looks like a very substantial engine it's, to me. It is. It's very substantial. It has a 200-pound empty weight, and when I call it a dry weight, empty weight, that's going to be without the accessories on it. So we start adding from there. Okay. And we have some options on the front of the sheet here that shows what those are. But you're going to come in with the, your accessorized fully at about 210 to 11 pounds. And the other brand X might be in the 215 to 216 range. Okay, so you are, you're definitely lighter and you've got more power. That's correct. Uh, even if you're not a lot lighter, you've got quite a substantial 25% more power it's a nice uh, than kick. a typical O200 anyway. So It's a nice kick and it does it a little bit by a pinch more compression and a pinch more RPM. I was just going to ask you that, how it gets the extra juice out of it. This airplane is a little more distinctive than the more modern engines in that, you know, it is an aluminum cylinder with no head. So you cannot have... Yeah, I was you, noticing you, that out here. You just got some valve covers, but no head on You it. cannot have a head separation, which happens from time to time. So with a, with a steel insert, say. So that's... Uh, right, okay. So this so, is this component I've got my hand on right here, this is all aluminum. That is correct. Okay, One excellent. One solid chunk. And then it's sleeved, so when it comes overhaul time, you'll take this off. It's not through bolts either, which can cause torquing issues on an overhaul too. You know, they're not the through bolts, they're just pulled into the block. You heat it up, slide the sleeve out, put the new one in, rebore it, and you've got a new cylinder again. It's very well, economical you, in terms of overhaul. Of all the Franklin engines that are out there now, uh, and, and they've, they've always been either a kit or now you're doing these, but uh, it was never a factory factory installed engine. How many of them approximately have you got out there operating? Oh boy. Well, we're, we've introduced this engine in the spring, so we can't come up with some really nice numbers to impress you with. Well, not but this we, one alone, but we, I mean all everything with a Franklin name on it. There's 20, there are 2,500 engines operating okay. in the United States now. That doesn't count Europe and Africa and South America. Wow, okay, so, so a that's a pretty substantial number. Yeah, it is. It I've is. always said that, you know, if you're making a new airframe, you've got some work to do to make people believe that you got something good, but the same effort for engines is even harder because 
that's the thing that's going to get you to the destination and people have a lot of doubt about something new that's right you have a big benefit in the franklin name is very well known but uh, having that many out there is also something that makes people feel and good and it's super competitive i mean there are a lot of it's it's you can you can pick and choose what you want you know it's very mission specific i mean you can go the high yeah, rpm what, what do you mean by that i mean how do you how do you pick something different about the engine this engine is going to appeal to the guy that prefers to have more of a stable, standard, known platform. He's going to sacrifice a few pounds going up against some of the new, really high-tech, Fadic uh, engines that are out there now that are quite expensive, but work pretty, pretty well. Good so, engines, no doubt, but well, they've got extra stuff on them that some people do. don't really get. Is they that do. it? And, and it's, uh, okay. you know, a lot of them have been around for a while, and it's, uh, you know, they're tight and small and light, and those are the people we battle against. But it's, uh, it's filling a niche. We have three manufacturers here that have showed an interest that we give an engines to after the show. So that's a good start for me. Excellent. Well, good for you. Uh, let's do a brief review of all the engines. We know about this one now, okay. but I'm kind of looking over your shoulder and I right. see a couple other colors. So the, uh, uh, what else does it mean the, besides the fact they got different colors? The blue engine is different only in that it is a bed mount. Ah, okay. Okay, you can see different induction. The carburetor's on the back. It has the balance tubes around the side. Other than that, it's the same so displacement. So it literally kind of rests. That's right. Okay. And one of the OEMs over here is interested in that because it fits better in their design. So this fits on the O200 mount. That fits on a bed mount. So okay. it covers both faces. The gray one over here is kind of the muscle muscle machine. It's, I see it's a six cylinder. So it is a 350 cubic inch engine, which comes up with 220 horsepower. Oh wow. So it's okay. Very efficient again on the thrust to weight. Excellent. Yeah. So and that's being manufactured. And is that new. also a bed mount? Based it on what I'm seeing, oh, yeah. it could be either way. Yeah. Okay, okay. It can. And what would would people replace? I mean, besides the home builder that's building new, would somebody replace There's an a, engine with that engine? That has a fair amount of an application. There's an STC out there for the 170, 175, and 172s. Oh, really? Okay. And it's on a lot of the mall aircraft. Oh, ah, okay. Now that was in production, a very successful engine for a long time. It stopped production about 15 years, and we're bringing it back as a certified model through the certificate holder which is called Franklin Engines, but they're, they're, they're based in Poland. I see, okay. So we're trying to bring all the Franklin community back together and make a little more of a focus point to make it more effective. Well, before we ask you for a web address, let me get a little bit personal then. How long have you been the man here, Kelly? Well, let's, let's not use the man thing. Okay? That's, <laughs> that's a little bit too big of a label. How long have I been involved okay, in, let's this, do it that in way. this economic stimulus plan? <laughs> yes, indeed. A man of a sense of humor. Okay, uh, I like we've that. We've been at it for about five years. Okay, five years yeah. you've been and uh, that, doing this. And that was from the... Uh, conceptual idea of doing it to getting the warehouse, getting the shelving, getting the inventory, getting it inventoried, you know, for the first time in 50 years. Wow. And then getting the overhaul facility moved in and getting it all cranked up and going. So we've been actively overhauling engines for the last, well, Southern Arrow is the affiliate and they've been doing it for, you know, five or six or seven years and they've been involved with me heavy for the last couple. Okay, great. Yeah. Where are you based? We're in Thomasville, North Carolina. Okay. And specialize in the support and the overhaul of the entire Franklin engine line. So this is where you need to go if you want it done right. That's great. Well, people are going to have more questions. I've asked all the ones I can think of. I'm sure there's a lot more, especially from more technical people. Where can we find you on the web where they can contact you and learn more stuff? Yep, it would be Franklin Aerospace is the, uh, the website. And my uh, personal uh, is uh, uh, kb.franklinaerospace at gmail.com. Okay, very right. good. You can take it from there and we'll respond. Very good. Any you... questions we'd be glad to have. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kelly. You can find lots more about all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Kelly Bartlett and myself here at AirVenture Oshkosh.